Hello crafty friends, welcome to today's video and the second video in this series on using embossing folders in clean and simple card making. This is the card I made earlier today. I thought I'd show you how I made it and include some adjustments and variations along the way. The embossing folder that I'm going to be using today is this one. It is six by six inches and I think this is quite an old one that came off the front of a magazine a few years ago, a card making magazine. On this card I used one ink colour, Seedless Preserves Distress Oxide, but on today's card I'm going to use Shaded Lilac and Wilted Violet, and Shaded Lilac I think is more or less a lighter version of Wilted Violet. So on this side of my embossing folder I'm going to add some Shaded Lilac ink, and I'm going to do that with my brayer. I'm going to load up my brayer so it's nice and inky and then roll over this side of my embossing folder and this is the side where you get the background raised so when I put my paper through my cuttle bug with this embossing folder you'll see the background gets the shaded lilac colour and I'm just trying to make sure I can get as much of that covered as possible so there aren't any patches. I'll just hold it up to the light. It's such a, a light colour this shaded lilac. Now I'm not going to waste this, I'm going to squirt it with water and pick it up with some paper. I'll just clean up that last little bit and wipe this to get the shaded lilac off and then on the other side of the embossing folder I'm going to add wilted violet. And I've rolled off what's left on my brayer onto this card and you can sort of see the pattern appearing which is quite nice. But we'll add a bit of water to that and then re-smush these in it. And they'll make useful things for die cutting out of at some point. So I've got a piece of five and three quarter by five and three quarter inch smooth white cardstock and I'm going to give my embossing folder a light misting on both sides with water just to help that distress oxide move around a bit and then very carefully I'm going to squish that between there and run this through my cuttle bug. If we open this up we've got shaded lilac on the background and the raised portion is still white and on this side the raised portion is the background and that's white, but the embossed or debossed portion is wilted violet. So I can put that aside for washing, I'll just give that a rinse under a tap and it will be fine. I want to die cut some label shapes from both sides of this. These label dies are from L Studio. I got them quite a long time ago and used them loads in my scrapbooking. So I'm going to just run them up this side. I'll just keep them in place here with a bit of washi tape and run this through my cotton bug to cut it. I'm going to flip that over and cut from the other side and the reason I'm not just cutting all from one side and then flipping these over is because a die cut has a right side and a wrong side and this side is where it's beveled nicely on the other side it doesn't look so neat and tidy so I'm doing it like this so I get the, the beveled edge on this side. Now you can add ink to your embossing folder by uh, swiping your ink pad over the top. Uh, I prefer to use the brayer for two reasons. One I don't get swipe marks, it's a nice even layer of ink that goes down. I think you can see on here that 
there are there's a directionality to the ink droplets and unless that's a look that you particularly want then um, I'd go for using a brayer and the other thing is pressing down with an ink pad you're more likely to get ink where you don't want it so I've got some ink on the background here and here uh, so with a brayer you tend to avoid that so that would be my top tip for inking up embossing folders use a brayer while I've got my ink out, I'm going to blend some ink onto this other piece of smooth white cardstock so I can die cut a butterfly out of it. You don't have to do butterflies, you could do flowers, hearts, stars, whatever you fancy. I think I'll bring in a bit of the shaded lilac as well in case I want a bit of variation somewhere along the line. None of this will be wasted. This will just go into my pouch of pretties to be used at a future date. So the card that I made earlier is four by six inches smooth white cardstock. But I'm going to try this on a five by seven card blank with a card panel on the front because I think it needs a little bit of breathing space, a bit more white space around it. So I've got my purple, my shaded lilac pile my wilted violet pile and I've also cut a load of die cuts with just white paper that I've run through my embossing folder so that's just embossed with no ink on it at all and that should give me lots of lovely texture on my card before I stick my panel on my card I'm going to add all my die cuts and I'm not sure if I'm going to go all the way to the top I think I might just cluster my die cuts down in this bottom corner and in the top corner there just so there's lots of breathing space something like that the wilted violet is the attention grabbing color in this so i want to make sure it's balanced so that the eye takes in both clusters to stick these down i'm going to use tacky glue and just add a little bit, pop it on. I think I'll leave a little gap at the bottom there. And lay them down in a higgledy-piggledy fashion that looks purposeful and appealing. I want the ends to be staggered so they're not lined up. Okay, so that's that side done. I think I'll turn it round so I can see what I'm doing over here. Now this large one I'm going to bring in. I'm going to leave a slightly bigger gap here than I left there to give the butterfly that I'm going to put on it plenty of space to breathe. Now I'm going to chop off the bits of the clusters that I don't want. So I should have done this before I put the bits on. I want to add a little bit of detail with this tracing tool, sewing tracing tool. It's going to add some faux stitching. I'm just going to press down to emboss in a rather wobbly way some faux stitching around the outside so I've got one line that is straight and then another line that is wobbly just to add a little bit of variation so that's a straight line and then a wobbly line on top and the same with this this doesn't go through the paper, I think it might if I pressed really, really hard. But it just embosses it as if it was stitched. You can get dies that do this. There. Just a little fun detail around the edge. And because I cut this panel with a trimmer rather than a die, I'm going to go around the edge 
with an embossing tool to just bevel the edge and make it look as if it was cut with a die rather than a trimmer. And now I can add this onto here. And I think I'm gonna pop a bit of card behind it to raise it up so it's a little bit proud of the card. I don't want to go full craft foam. I think that would be too much. I'm trying to find my scissors. But a bit of card behind it, a bit of card stock. We'll give it a little bit of a lift. This one, I didn't put anything behind the panel. Okay, we can put some glue on that. I might do two actually. then some tape runner to adhere it to the card blank. So there we go, a little bit of lift and a little bit of separation between the panel and the card. So I made these earlier, I did that with blending, that with smushing with the waste ink and that with rollering my brayer with the ink that I'd used to cover the embossing folder. And I'm thinking this would be lovely to cut my butterfly from. So that's what I'm gonna do. So there's my butterfly. I think I might find a couple of smaller ones. I've got a couple of butterflies here. I think I will cut them from this lighter portion. So they could go down there like that. So on this one, I've only got the one. We've got that one there. I'm just wondering if I might want a bigger one. I haven't got any of that brayed pattern left, but I could use this. I'll cut it out and see what it looks like. Right, I've settled on a slightly bigger butterfly there cut from this piece of smushed paper. I've moved the butterfly that was there down to there. So we're creating a bit of a hierarchy which draws the eye up the card. And then I've cut that small butterfly out of the darker portion of the brayed paper. So those two match, but that one's a bit stronger. So it kind of grabs the attention. For this butterfly, I inked some paper with seedless preserves then I went round it with some gold gilding wax and then I added a piece of vellum behind it. So it's got vellum wings as well, which gives it a, a nice ethereal feel. And I did ink, no, wax, gilt the uh, vellum as well. But I don't think I want to add gold gilding wax to these, but I'm thinking they need to be a bit glossy. I could have put clear packing tape over the paper before I die cut them out, but I didn't. So the next easiest thing to do is heat emboss them with clear embossing powder. So I press my butterflies into my rather dirty embossing pad, cover them in embossing ink, so they're done and they look lovely and glossy I'm just going to add some tacky glue to the back of the bodies I'm not going to put any vellum on the back just for a bit of a change on this one for the body of the butterfly I added three small flat backed pearls this one though, I'm going to give my butterflies some Nouveau Drop bodies in pale gold. Now, although I'm putting them in drops, down in drops, they will probably merge together, but they will give a nice dimensional gold body to the butterflies and just elevate things a little bit, I think. For a sentiment, I'm going to use this birthday wishes and tuck it in around here. I'm going to add this on a bit of craft foam, I think, 
to give it some dimension and lift it off of the butterflies. So this sentiment I made using the Silhouette Studio software and I printed it and cut it on my Silhouette Cameo. So I think that one will go nicely there. And on this one, I used this confetti, butterfly confetti die to cut out some little butterflies to flutter up the card from some card that I'd coloured with seedless preserves. Uh, but I'm thinking, I don't want to go in too heavy. I will cut it out of a bit of this and that will give me a few to choose from and I'll just see what ones work best. I'm going to pop the dark ones on first just to see if they are okay. I don't want them too dark because they might distract from the big butterflies. Some of them have got a bit of a tie-dye appearance to them which is nice. I do want them to stand out though. I think they actually work quite well, but I might put a few lighter ones as well, just for a bit of texture. Yeah, I think that works. So I need a little bit of glue here and I can just dip my butterflies into it and stick them down. tiny butterflies I'm going to add a little bit of glossy accents so they have a little bit of shine to them so some of them are shiny and some of them aren't just for a bit of variation so there we go two cards made using the same embossing folder technique adding ink using a brayer. You'll have to know which one you prefer in the comments. I think I prefer this one. I think it's just got a bit more space, a bit more breath, a bit more life, but I do like this darker inking, more of this darker inking. So I think if I was to do this one again, I might, I don't know, because it, it would maybe hide the butterflies a bit, but I might try and incorporate a bit more darkness into the embossed panel but as I say let me know which one you prefer I hope you've enjoyed the video and it's given you some ideas of things you could do with some of the embossing folders in your stash if it has please do leave a thumbs up let me know in the comments come over to the Facebook group and share a photo and subscribe if you'd like to see more from me right thanks for watching bye for now